Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for the service and for the opportunity to share your word with your people today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you minister to us in a special way. I pray that you give me the ability to say a word in season, O oh Lord, to your people. I pray that together, O oh Lord, we will not just hear your word, but go and do it. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, the word I want to share with us is not something we haven't heard before, even in this house. But it's one of those things that we just have to keep on reminding ourselves from time to time. And the title I've given it is The Priority of Entering the Kingdom of God. The Priority of Entering the Kingdom of God. If you go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, the Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that have been mentioned from verse 25 up to that point, what you will wear, what you will eat, what you will drink, how you will make it, how you will promote it, whether you have money left after mortgage, whether you will do this, whether, you know, sometimes we analyze so much, we worry so much when things haven't happened, we're already worrying about it. You know, we are going to the bank of worry, sometimes to go and withdraw worry in advance. You know, I don't know why people do that. We find ourselves worrying about things that haven't happened, and we're so good at it. We just, and then when the person is, somebody is cautioning us, we're still worrying. And then the person says, but it hasn't happened. Where, what if it happens? Where, what if it doesn't? <laughs> what if it doesn't? You know, so we are saying, God is saying to you and I here, look, I know about the need to wear things, the need to drink, the need to eat, the need to, you know, have money left after your, your, you've paid your bills so that you can be a normal adult and a normal person, you know. But the bottom line is you've got to seek first. The word first is included. We need to seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Then what did he say after that? He didn't just stop there. He said, and all these things. So God addressed everything we need, but he said it's not going to be the way you are talking it. It's going to be my way. It's going to be that you seek my kingdom first and my righteousness the righteousness of god is the right standing with god everything that has to do with the righteousness of god that's why you can see in matthew 5 matthew 6 matthew 7 the whole of those three chapters even matthew 8 jesus said a lot of things about righteousness when he's teaching us how to forgive, how to not do it for that, how to resolve conflict, how to, how to honor, how to give without showing off. All those things, they are all about righteousness. So he says, seek first God's kingdom. Seek first, another word for kingdom is government. Seek first the government of God. Some people are very good. <laughs> At running, uh, they are passionate for the for the for the kingdom of UK, <laughs> than for the kingdom of God. They can tell you all the laws up to today, the ones that have just changed today. They can tell you, but when you ask them to tell you one law of the kingdom that they claim to belong to of God, they can't. And God is saying, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So seek first the kingdom of God, seek his righteousness, that is seek the righteousness of God. Then all these things, when you do that, then all these things shall be added. So actually, it's a paradigm shift. That's not the way the sinful man, the sinful nature of man talks. But that is the way, or thinks, but that is the way the born again Christian thinks. The born again Christian has been redeemed. The born again Christian is now in Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So it's not impossible for the person to seek the kingdom of God first, the righteousness of God first, and then the things that they really wanted are now following after that. It's not a problem for them to think that way. 
When people are having problems thinking that way, it's a sign that they are not there yet. We are not going to adjust the word of God for people. The word of God is settled forever in heaven. The word of God is forever. Praise the Lord. So it's a priority for you and I to enter the kingdom of God. How many of us want to enter the kingdom of God? You can see from the topic, even though you and I call ourselves kingdom citizens, it's a matter of faith. The day of judgment hasn't come yet. That is when you will know those who enter the kingdom. We are not getting carried away. And that is why, because you are saved and saved forever, doesn't give you the right to continue to sin forever and think that that means you are born again. If you are truly born again, then your actions, because faith without works is dead, so your, your, your works will have to back up your profession. Your action must back up your profession of faith. You now say you are born again. We argue with you, but God knows those who are his. And whatever you continue to do for all those decades that God is keeping you in this world, it will show whether you really are the born again Christian. You told us it will show whether God thinks so too. Because he's the judge of all. So we don't play with our life. We don't play with our calling. We don't play with our election. We also know that the gift and the callings of God are without repentance. If you say that God has called you, God has chosen you, and that you have believed that Jesus rose from the dead, he conquered death, and that he's the son of God, he came to die for your sins, his blood has washed away all your sins, and you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, so be it, you are saved. But it is a matter of faith, it's by grace that we are saved, through faith. So your daily life from there, that moment, has to now be in line with his righteousness. Because we're still seeking first the kingdom of God. We're seeking his righteousness. That is our priority. It's no more about what I can get away with. It is about, is this right with God? It's no more about, eh, but nobody is complaining. It is about, is it pleasing unto God? It's not about, but nobody said I'm wrong. It is about, it's in line with God. Because if you are waiting on human beings to let you know when you are wrong, they won't. That's when they will pamper you. That's when they tell you you are great. In fact, that's when your Instagram followership will increase. <laughs> and that's why many people are misled with that. And it becomes what? Pride of life. There are three things that are affecting even people with title up to today. Three things. Lost of the eyes. Lost of the flesh. Pride of life. Go and look at anything and everything that you, you and I want to call a scandal. You will see that it comes under one, at least one of those three. As the Bible says in first, uh, I think it's first John or second John. He said those three things, the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life. He said they are not of the Father, they are of the world. Very clear statement in the word of God. Anything that I'm doing that is making me feel like, ah, I've now become a great guy in this world. And it's not based on the word of God. I need to be careful. Because it's going to build me and put me on a pedestal of deceit and self-conceit that by the time I realize what's going on, it's too late. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Our priority must be to seek the kingdom of God. Our priority must be to seek the righteousness of God. Our priority must be to want to please God, to want to do what pleases Him. People can mock you. In fact... When you start being mocked, that is when you have arrived as a Christian. Especially by your family, extended family, because your family is really your husband and wife and children. You know, many of us say, my family, my family. My family is my wife and children, not someone else. The others, including mommy, daddy, they are all extended family now. My family is my wife and children. So, here we have to realize that you have to seek the kingdom of God first. When you seek the kingdom of God first, everything becomes easy. You will honor your parents. You will obey them. You will honor them in a way that even they can't know you can. But now that they've allowed you to be who you are in Christ, you can even do more than they were expecting. 
And when people start mocking you, scoffing at you, it's a sign. They are, you are beginning to take the higher level. You are beginning to take the higher level that pleases God. It's an unpopular place to be. But we're not looking for popularity. We're looking for God's priority. If it's God's priority, that's where we want to be. That is where we should be found. Jesus started talking about righteousness indirectly. When you look at Matthew 5, 6, 7, but if you look at Matthew 5, 3 to 12, we call it the Beatitudes, the high blessings of, of God through Christ Jesus. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who are spiritually helpless. That's why we don't come to church judging people. Let them come as they are. <clears throat> because sometimes we're even struggling more with those who claim to know already. Let's, just, let's, let's have the ones who are fresh. They don't have any attitude. They don't have any, this is the way I am. Everybody, everybody has to take it or leave it. They just come as they are. They know they are smokers. They know they are drunkards. They know they are womanizers. They came as they are and nobody's judging them. They just came as they are. The word of God will transform them. Do, we are praying that they come in. We are praying that they come in. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who are spiritually helpless. That's what it means. They don't know too much, spiritually speaking, but they're in the right place. And what did Jesus said? He said, this is the kingdom of heaven. And what that also means is he also includes me and you. When you are always spiritually helpless before God, it means you don't go to God with some arrogance of, I'm already at this level. I don't need you, God, on this, you know, I, I, I'm mature. I don't need you, no. Every time I go to his throne, I want to go empty-handed so he can fill me 100% every time. Every time. That's why it's not difficult for us to pray, pray of forgiveness every time. Thank God every time. Ah, I don't need to pray forgiveness. I mean, everybody knows. Ah, I've got tied to. I've been born again for a long time. I don't need to pray. That's for new Christians. Really? He said, blessed are those who are spiritually helpless. That's poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom. When you approach God, when you do the things for God, when you're worshiping God through your service, through your lifestyle, through your example, are you showing yourself spiritually helpless to God? Or like you know what you're doing? So there's no room for him to direct. There's no room for him to to change us, to challenge us, to charge us. So Jesus went on giving us um, all the blessings there. But I jumped to verse 10 of that Matthew 5. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I don't know about you. I know some single person who has become born again. And when it's time to marry, her relatives began to give her trouble. Because they, they, they have never respected the fact that she says she's born again. And they have been waiting for when it's time for her to marry, that this is the way they want this. No, she's going to stand her ground. And if she's been praying before then, anybody who tries to compromise her faith, God will deal with the person. So she won't need to insult her elders. She won't need to insult her mother and father. She won't need to be angry. She won't need to. You think from now. Because why? Your focus is on the kingdom. Your focus is on the righteousness of God. You are not waiting till when you start dating. That's when you are now starting to let everybody know you are born again among your people. They can only respect what you have respected. So if you start respecting God in your life and present it to them that way, two years later when you, it's now time to marry, they will respect you already. They will never be able to suggest nonsense to you that you know is not of Christ. You, you'll be surprised what some people go through when they're about to marry. Their parents are insisting on some dangerous, traditional, demonic things that they must do. They're insisting. And the world is, is getting worse. So if you are here today and you are still trusting God for marriage, you need to begin to look forward now. This is not, this is not about shishi poo poo. Me, I'm not thinking about marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah we know that. No, but it's not a business to tell you when to marry. But begin to make sure 
that when that time comes, you are not going to get all kinds of ill winds blowing to affect that wonderful stage of your life. Blessed are they which are persecuted. So persecution sometimes has come from even people that we claim to love and respect. Persecution comes from people at work. It comes from fellow Christians sometimes. It comes from people who are envious of you. But if you are doing the right thing, the Bible says blessed are those who are persecuted. Which means God is letting you and I know that persecution comes with the territory. If it's, if it's not expected, he won't, he won't say that. He said, blessed are those who are, he didn't say those who are persecuted. He said those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. If you are doing what is in right standing with God, and you are being persecuted for it, you are blessed. So when you went and reported to somebody everything they said, and after 10 minutes of telling them the enormity of what some people have done to you, the person now said, my brother, it is well. You are blessed. You won't get angry. That, is that all you can say? Because you know exactly what they mean. Because Jesus has said it. If you are going through that and it's because you are doing the right things that glorify God, ah, it's their problem. It's not yours. Take strength from that and continue to seek the righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. In verse 12, in fact, in verse 11, he stretched that verse 10 a bit more. He said, blessed are you when men shall revile you. So, when people revile, that's not funny. That's not a joke. It feels like a lonely place. It feels like the whole world is against you. It feels like everybody is right and you are wrong. It's not a good place to be. But it's, <laughs> Jesus is saying, blessed are you when men revile you. And persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. This is when they say it falsely. It's not true. And they said it. But it's not true. And God is saying you are blessed. So the person who told you on the phone, after you've told him all the details, said you are blessed. Don't fight him. He's actually speaking the mind of God. All that happened to you, ah, my brother, you are blessed. The person hasn't still given you a solution. But you are blessed. They did all that to you? Ah, my brother, you are blessed indeed. He said, <laughs> rejoice, in verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. You can't go through all this in vain. As long as it's for righteousness sake, as long as it's something that is not true about you, that they are saying, and they are persecuting you, they are reviling you, they are speaking all manner of evil things against you falsely, it means you are blessed and your reward is great in heaven. In Matthew 25, we see another passage that sort of lets us know that we need to prioritize our life by focusing on the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In Matthew 25, 31 to 46, again, I won't go through all the details, but in Matthew 25, 31 to 46, we see the parable of the sheep and the goats. And I'll rush through some verses there in verse 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and they shall separate them one from another. These are parables that talk about the end, that talk about the judgment that is coming. Let no one deceive you. It's not going to be just based on because you said, you said, and you are doing what you like, you like. You know, can we continue in sin and we say grace abounds? God forbid. It's not going to be about that. There's going to be a judgment time where people will be separated. There will be a sifting. So he said, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. One day I will do a teaching on sheep, you know, qualities of sheep. <laughs> Some of them will shake you, make you feel as if, ah, I don't want that, but at the end, you will say you want it. 